Hello everyone. This week I'm caught up on YouTube. Uh, for those who don't know, I started posting these on YouTube. And for the other side that doesn't know, I put these on Facebook first. And before that, this was on my radio station. That's why some dates don't make sense. Anyways, we're all caught up now. Today we're going to start in John chapter 7 verse 14. Not until halfway through the feast did Jesus go up to the temple courts and begin to teach. The Jews were amazed and asked, How did this man get such learning without having studied? Jesus answered, My teaching is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teachings comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. I like this one because I am like Jesus in the sense that I am not recognized as a teacher, but that doesn't mean I can't be and I can't study to be like one. The only thing needed to be a good teacher is to know God. Jesus makes an interesting statement here. He says his teaching is not his own. This speaks to the codependence on the Father and the Son. Jesus' humanness is such a mystery. What this says to me is that Jesus had wishes just like us. What those wishes were, I'm not sure. But we have wishes such as we wish that the government would be less forceful, we wish that we could just sometimes go to church and not all the time, we wish that we wouldn't have to forgive people sometimes. Now that doesn't sound like Jesus, so I don't know. It's difficult to understand that he was God with human biology. He had hormones and other chemicals that sent messages to his brain, like us. So I don't know. But either way, it doesn't matter because he always trusted God and always gave his teachings. If a man works for the honor of God 100% of the time, then he has 0% falsity. And that's what Jesus was. None of the rest of us have been 100% though, so there's something false about all of us. I know I need to remember this passage since I am in a teacher-like situation. I'm sure my own wishes have seeped in a couple times, and I need to remember to not do that. Let's continue. Has not Moses given you the law, yet not one of you keeps the law? Why are you trying to kill me? You are demon possessed, the crowd answered. Who is trying to kill you? Jesus said to them, I did one miracle and you are all astonished. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though actually it did not come from Moses but from the patriarchs, you circumcised a child on the Sabbath. Now if a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath so that the laws of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing the whole man on the Sabbath? Stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. I'm surprised that the Jews gave a rhetorical and sarcastic question. They asked who is trying to kill you because they were saying, the people that represent Moses, who represents God, are trying to kill you. Clearly you're insane. In that time, the law of Moses was a bit of a general term for all quote-unquote holy laws, there were many laws of Moses that weren't even from Moses. Circumcision was, but allowing it on the Sabbath was not. But his point was that they allowed someone to get hurt on the Sabbath, but they don't allow someone to get healed. Circumcision hurts, that's for sure. And Jesus has done a lot of healing on the Sabbath, so I don't know which one it is, but the man at the pool comes to mind. Uh, isn't making a man walk for the first time in decades more important than changing someone's pee-pee? This is strange timing because I had a situation like this in my life recently. Not circumcision, thankfully, I don't remember that. But there was something at work where the rules outweighed logic. And I legitimately got upset by it because my boss has made arguments not based off logic, but arguments that revolved around the rule. And the thing about it was that I was honestly fine with the rule in practice, like I'm comfortable with it, but I suggested, hey, since this is accepted, then this should be accepted too, right? And they're like, 
no, that's not what the rules say. And I'm like, uh, okay, but don't you see, like, this is equally as good as that, and this is even better, and they're like, no, that's not what the rules say. And so what Jesus is saying is that rules have the appearance of being fact, but sometimes you need better judgment to find the actual fact. This is unfortunate because this means I'm right, but I still have to live with the dumb rule. Oh well, I'm sure they didn't listen to Jesus either. But with Jesus, that was an actual injustice, so... Anyways, remember to read your Bible closely so that you will understand what God actually wants, not what it seems he wants, based on your own agenda. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week.